Okay, we're going to remove the uh, con rods uh, from the crankshaft next. So the first thing I've done is I've labelled the uh, I've labelled both uh, con rods as to which one they are, drive side, and that that's the outside. So that when I put them back, same con rod on the same side, and also the same way round. One thing to note, you probably can't see it, but the uh, the uh, the conrod, the conrod, and the uh, the big end cap are marked. Uh, they have like a mark to make sure that the cap and the conrod go round the same way. There's like a slash mark on this. I don't know if it will, if it will show up. I'm interested to see what the big the state the big ends are in, because the rest of the the bottom end seems uh, absolutely fine. We might even reuse the main bearing, so uh, I'm I'm sure we definitely won't be reusing the the big end shells. But I'm interested to see what state they're in. So I've got the uh, I've got my mini uh, quarter inch whip, and you, again thin one because you you can't get a spanner or socket on those. You have to have a thin socket. Take the uh, big end nuts off, we'll definitely be replacing those and we'll also almost certainly be replacing the actual big end bolts themselves. And let's see if that will wiggle off. Sometimes it will, sometimes it won't. Okay, uh, so to get the uh, caps off, I'm going to try uh, a bit awkward. I shall try my ham my old hammer shaft. There it goes. There, that comes off there. Right. Let's have a look. So the shells aren't too bad. Just gotta wipe them a bit. So what have we got? Let's see, I see what you can see. Uh right, so the shells are obviously warm, we're down to the sort of the, the under metal. It's uh that sort of copper colour. And you can see that there's uh can you see that there's a scratch uh just to the left of the oil hole there. There's quite a, I don't know if I can catch it in the light, there's quite a groove. Yeah, where obviously some bit of grit or something has got in there. And so there's a quite a, I can catch my nail in it quite easily. It's quite a deep groove there. But the shells themselves, you know, they're not badly worn. They're worn, as you would expect to be. So here's the, the, the other side. Again, we've got that same groove. I don't know if you can see it. That dark mark is common in the middle. That's where the uh, oil way will be on the journal. The journal, again, that's got, that'll have definitely need um, honing at least, and it may need a regrind. It's that middle bit. What's happened is, it's where all the corrode has come up from the, uh, you know, from oil. And that's why all this bit is scored in the middle. Because it's obviously had, probably not had regular oil changes at some point there's been crud got in the oil it's got round and it's scored the journals and, and obviously the, the caps the, the bearing um, the bearing shells so I'll just take this bearing shell out and I think let's have a look I'll check the part number but I'm pretty sure that that is a standard uh, standard shell so I'm fairly sure that the the big ends have not been reground. I'll check the part number, yeah, but I'm fairly sure that that is uh, a standard show. So yeah, they've not been. Don't think it's been reground before. But you know, it's all looking good. I mean, we'll definitely be replacing the shells, obviously. Um, and either, but the crank either needs honing, but that's some quite deep score. Well, there's a bit of score in there, so that might need 
regrinding down to a, uh, a larger size, a smaller journal, larger size cat uh, shells. Right, let's see if I can get the other cotton rod off. There it goes. The shell, the shell stayed on in that case. Yeah, this uh, side looks much the same. So just a slightly worn shell, nothing major. Yeah. The worn down to the sort of under metal, that copper colour, but also there's that scoring, look. You see there's scoring there, so. And again, on the journal, Again, I don't know how well you can see this, but again, that centre bit of the journal, you can see the score marks. I think you can see it on both journals quite clearly. That centre, there's like a ring around the centre of the journal. And that's, uh, you know, where crud's been coming up with the oil, going around, and going around the journal. But, you know, again, not bad, not bad. The... Uh, so the journal will either need to be honed at very least to get rid of that scoring. And if the scoring is too deep, it's quite deep on this side, on the, uh, what's that, the tire, uh, drive side, it's quite deep on that side. If, if it's too deep, then we'll have to, they'll have to be ground down to the next size and we'll fit oversized shells. Obviously, we'll be replacing the shells. You know, you, I think you'd be utterly mad if you <laughs> rebuilt an engine and put... You know, the shells in whether it needs regrinding or not we'll be replacing the big end nuts and we'll also be replacing uh, the big end bolts uh, only because they over time they be, they stretch the big end bolts uh, so it's, it's it's always probably a good practice to replace the big end bolts and we'll be checking the con rods and we'll be you know, for scratches and dents and damage and just probably give them a very light, if there's any scratches or anything, we'll be giving them a very light uh, sort of sand down. Get rid of any dents and scratches. Right, good. And when I've cleaned these up, I'll re I'll get rid of all the protective stuff so I can see the conrod, and then I'll relabel them. Okay, uh, the last thing I'm going to do, certainly for now, for the... Um, to the crankshaft is I'm going to try removing the inner races of the two main bearings on either end of the crankshaft only to stop them getting damaged if they prove a real pain to get off then I'll probably leave them on pending reusing the bearings that are in there and at the moment I can't see a reason for not reusing the bearings because they seem to be very good quality bearings and they seem to be in good condition. But um, it could be we replace them anyway. I'm not sure at this moment in time. But I'll see if I can get these off. If I can't get them off, then I'll put some tape around them to protect them. And then if we and then if we are going to replace, if we decide to then replace them, I'll get them off. You know, because it doesn't matter whether they're damaged. But I'll just try getting them off without damaging them in case we uh, reuse them. So I need to go and. I've got a special um, inner race removal tool and hopefully that will work. Okay, I've got my uh, puller tool out and that's basically got very, very uh, thin jaws that then sit behind the uh, inner race of the bearing. And clamp it up and then as with a normal puller you then uh, can then put that on with bolts that screw in there and pull it off but I'm a bit worried that this tool is going to damage the uh, it might damage the surface of the 
bearing. And it doesn't, it's not fitting perfectly underneath the, the bearing race. So what I've decided to do is I think I am just going to put some tape around these bearings. The, these are the inner races of the main bearings um, to protect them. So that should we, should it be that we do reuse these, then they'll be fine. And they'll be protected, they can just stay on. And if we do decide to change them, then I can use my tool to get them off because it doesn't matter if they are damaged in, in removal. Okay, I think that's going to be where I'm going to leave the crankshaft for now once I've put some tape around these bearings. I've noticed, I don't know if you can, yeah, there's a big pile of oil there. And that's because I was standing the crankshaft up. Because, of course, on the drive side, the drive side is hollow. And that's where the oil goes straight from the oil pump down the crankshaft and comes out of the big end. These uh, holes in the in the big ends, that's where the oil goes to first. Whoosh, out, out of there, there's a drilling uh, in the top of the conrod, which doesn't go up to the small ends. It does in some, uh, some cases, but it comes out here. Uh, to sort of the sort of splash spray feed for the um, for the for the main bearings, because as the conrod goes round, there'll be a bit where it can spray straight onto the the main bearings when the flange, you know, the flange isn't in the way, uh, and that's why the conrods are fitted round different ways because they both need to face with the that oil hole facing outwards so that it sprays and, and gives a bit of extra lubrication to the main bearings which of course are not forced uh, they're not lubricated by uh, under pressure and then we've got the hole in the top of the conrod uh, which then feeds the small ends oh, and then there's a separate of course oil pipe that goes up to the cylinder head to feed the rockers but then apart from that everything is like drip fed so you've got high pressure to the big ends you've got high pressure to the uh, rockers on the rocker shafts. And after that, everything else is splash fed. And of course you've got separate oil in the, uh, in the primary chain case. And needless to say, separate oil in the gearbox. So I think I'm gonna leave that for now because I'll tell you why, because I'm gonna send this off to be reground. In order to regrind it, then it really needs to be split. These nuts, okay, the crankshaft is bolted together. Um, and I'm gonna send it to a specialist place. And, and I know that they'll take it apart, they'll regrind, and they'll bolt it back together for me. They'll probably use new bolts, I would have thought, for the for the for all these, uh, bolts that hold the crankcase together. And they will also clean out. It's very important. The oil, as I say, the oil goes in here and there's like a chamber in the middle. And you just want to make sure that all any sludge in that, in that chamber is cleared out. So they'll take it apart, grind it. They'll clear that out. Then they'll put new bolts in. And very importantly, they will torque them up. I think they're, they're 30 foot pounds. That, I need to check that, whatever the torque is, because I know on the 850 Mark III, I'm pretty sure it's 30 foot pounds. It might be different for these earlier models. Um, but you need a special uh, torque wrench to get onto these nuts. These nuts behind, you know, the normal torque wrench, you can't get onto it. And I don't have one of those. And so, since they're going to take it apart and do everything, I think, well, I might as well do it then. Yes, I'm just going to put some tape around these, these the races of these bearings. And uh, I might send the bearings off with the crankshaft and ask the engineer's opinion uh, of, uh, you know, whether they need replacing or not. Get a second opinion on it.